Indian epic poetry is the epic poetry written in the Indian subcontinent, traditionally called Kavya or Kavya, Sanskrit, Kavya Iast, Kavya. The Ramayana and the Mahabharata, which were originally composed in Sanskrit and later translated into many other Indian languages, and the five great epics of Tamil literature and Sangam literature are some of the oldest surviving epic poems ever written. Sanskrit epics The ancient Sanskrit epics the Ramayana and Mahabharata comprise together the Itihasa history", or Mahakavya great compositions", a canon of Hindu scripture. Indeed, the epic form prevailed and verse remained until very recently the preferred form of Hindu literary works. Hero worship is a central aspect of Indian culture, and thus readily lent itself to a literary tradition that abounded in epic poetry and literature. The Puranas, a massive collection of verse-form histories of India's many Hindu gods and goddesses, followed in this tradition. Itihases and Puranas are mentioned in the Atharva Veda and referred to as the Fourth Veda. The language of these texts, termed Epic Sanskrit, constitutes the earliest phase of classical Sanskrit, following the latest stage of Vedic Sanskrit found in the Shraddha Sutras. The Suparnakhyana, a late Vedic poem considered to be among the earliest traces of epic poetry in India, is an older, shorter precursor to the expanded legend of Garuda that is included within the Mahabharata. The Buddhist Kavi Asvaosa wrote two epics and one drama. He lived in the 1st 2nd century. He wrote a biography of the Buddha, titled Buddhakarita. His second epic is called Sandarananda and tells the story of the conversion of Nanda, the younger brother of the Buddha. The play he wrote is called Sariputra Prakarana, but of this play only a few fragments remained. The famous poet and playwright Kalidasa also wrote two epics, Raghuvamsha the dynasty of Ragu, and Kumarasambhava the birth of Kumar Kartikya. Other classical Sanskrit epics are the Slaying of Sisapala, Sisapalavada of Magga, Arjuna and the Mountain Man, Kiritarjuniya of Bharavi, the Adventures of the Prince of Nishada, Nisadakarita of Sriharsa and Bhati's poem, Bhatakavya of Bhati. Topic: Tamil epics. The post-Sangam period (2nd century, 6th century) saw many great Tamil epics being written, including Salapadikaram or Salapadikaram, Manamegalai, Savaka Sintamani, Valayapati, and Kandalakeshi. Later, during the Chola period, Kamban (12th century) wrote what is considered one of the greatest Tamil epics, the Kamba Ramayanam of Kamban, based on the Valmiki Ramayana. The Thiruthandit Puranam or Periya Puranam of Chekijar is the great Tamil epic of the Shaiva Bhakti saints and is part of the religious scripture of Tamil Nadu's majority Shaivites. Out of the five, Manamegalai and Kandalakeshi are Buddhist religious works, Savaka Sintamani and Valayapati are Tamil Jain works and Salapadikaram has a neutral religious view. They were written over a period of 1st century CE to 10th century CE and act as the historical evidence of social, religious, cultural and academic life of people during the era they were created. Savaka Sintamani introduced long verses called Virutha Pa in Tamil literature, while Salapadikaram used Akaval meter monologue, a style adopted from Sangam literature. Tamil epics such as Salapathakaram and Periya Puranam are unique in Indian literature as they employ characters and stories associated with the people and language of the poets Tamil and take place within the Tamil country. This is in contrast to other Indian languages which are based on Sanskrit works and deal with Sanskrit mythology based on North Indian works. <laughs> Kannada epic poetry Kannada epic poetry mainly consists of Jain religious literature and Lingayat literature. A saga wrote Vardaman Charitra, an epic which runs in 18 cantos, in 853 CE, the first Sanskrit biography of the 24th and last Tirthankara of Jainism, Mahavira, though his Kannada language version of Kalidasa's epic poem, Kumarasambhava, Karnataka Kumarasambhava Kavya is lost. The most famous poet from this period is Pampa 902 CE, one of the most famous writers in the Kannada language. His Vikramarjuna Vijaya also called the Pampabharatha is hailed as a classic even to this day. With this and his other important work Adi Purana he set a trend of poetic excellence for the Kannada poets of the future. 
The former work is an adaptation of the celebrated Mahabharata, and is the first such adaptation in Kannada. Noted for the strong human bent and the dignified style in his writing, Pampa has been one of the most influential writers in Kannada. He is identified as Adhikavi, first poet. It is only in Kannada that we have a Ramayana and a Mahabharata based on the Jain tradition in addition to those based on Brahmanical tradition. Shivakoshacharya was the first writer in prose style. His work Vidaradhan is dated to 900 CE. Sri Pana is also an important writer from the same period, with Shanti Purana as his magnum opus. Another major writer of the period is Rana 949? His most famous works are the Jain religious work Ahita Tirthankara Purana and the Gata Yudha, a bird's eye view of the Mahabharata set in the last day of the Battle of Kurukshetra and relating the story of the Mahabharata through a series of flashbacks. Structurally, the poetry in this period is in the Shampu style, essentially poetry interspersed with lyrical prose. The Sirabhuvalaya is a unique work of multilingual Kannada literature written by Kumudendu Muni, a Jain monk. The work is unique in that it does not employ letters, but is composed entirely in Kannada numerals. The Sangathya meter of Kannada poetry is employed in the work. It uses numerals 1 through 64 and employs various patterns or bandas in a frame of 729 27 times 27 squares to represent letters in nearly 18 scripts and over 700 languages. Some of the patterns used include the Chakrabanda, Hamsabanda, Varapamabanda, Sagarabanda, Sarasabanda, Kruanchabanda, Mayarabanda, Ramapadabanda, Nakabanda, etc. As each of these patterns are identified and decoded, the contents can be read. The work is said to have around 600,000 verses, nearly six times as big as the ancient Indian epic Mahabharata. The Prabhulingalayale, Basava Purana, Chanabasave Purana, and Basavarajavajaya are a few of the Lingayat epics. Hindi epics The first epic to appear in Hindi was Tulsidas, Ramacharitamanas, also based on the Ramayana. It is considered a great classic of Hindi epic poetry and literature, and shows the author Tulsidas in complete command over all the important styles of composition—narrative, epic, lyrical and dialectic. He has given a divine character to Rama, the Hindu avatar of Vishnu, portraying him as an ideal son, husband, brother and king. In modern Hindi literature, Kamayani by Jayashankar Prasad has attained the status of an epic. The narrative of Kamayani is based on a popular mythological story, first mentioned in Satipatha Brahmana. It is a story of the Great Flood and the central characters of the epic poem are Manu a male, and Shraddha a female. Manu is representative of the human psyche and Shraddha represents love. Another female character is Ida, who represents rationality. Some critics surmise that the three lead characters of Kamayani symbolize a synthesis of knowledge, action and desires in human life. Apart from Kamayani, Kurukshetra epic poetry 1946, Rajmirathi 1952 and Urvashi 1961 by Ramdari Singh Dinkar have attained the status of epic poetry. Likewise Lalita K. Anso by Krant M. L. Verma 1978 narrates the tragic story about the death of Lal Bahadur Shastri through his wife Lalita Shastri. <laughs> Notes <laughs>